Okay, so why am I talking to you about higher ed branding in a white lab coat? We have a proprietary approach to brand strategy we call brand chemistry. When I started studying perceptions of college and university brands about 20 years ago, I accepted the one-dimensional model of reputational rankings. We could measure perceived reputations for academic quality, and they were reasonably consistent over time. In Canada, university applicants perceived a top tier or two of institutions, a bottom rung, and the rest were spread somewhere in between. The size, age, and research intensity of the institution pretty much determined its reputation, with a few interesting exceptions. But the one-dimensional model really didn't provide much useful insight for brand strategy. Next, we developed a two-dimensional model that compared reputation for academic quality with reputation for student experience. Applicants generally rated institutions similarly on both axes, although there were a few interesting outliers. Working with this matrix for a few years and analyzing dozens of other perceived strengths and weaknesses led me to postulate a system of five quadrants. Yes, I know. Institutions strong on academics and student experience seem to be elite, research-intensive institutions with a long history. Those stronger on academics than the experience were typically commuter schools, attractive for their outcomes, research, employment prospects, etc. Students attracted to outcome schools were focused on the credential, not the residential experience. Schools perceived as stronger on student experience than academics were either strong campus schools, what the students might call party schools, or small, supportive, nurturing schools. And finally, schools perceived as somewhat weak on both axes, commodity schools, were attractive to students primarily because they were close to home or affordable. This institutional positioning framework helped in brand consulting, but we kept running into one major hurdle. Clients inevitably wanted to sit in more than one quadrant. Even sitting on the line between two adjacent quadrants didn't seem to quite do justice to the complexity of their institutions. I had to admit that institutional brand identities were more varied than the five-quadrant model would suggest. Looking at top-of-mind word associations, it was clear that students, faculty, parents, and the general public came up with a range of words to describe an institution. People thought of institutions as rigorous or easy, boring or party schools, much as the two-dimensional model had suggested. But schools were also perceived as large or small. They were traditional or modern, expensive or affordable, near or far away. They were associated with specific program areas, often professional schools, or with particular sports teams. Institutional brands are comprised of a number of key elements, many of which are shared with other institutions. What makes them unique brands is the way those elements are combined, much as chemical elements combine to create distinctive compounds. The fundamental elements that contribute to a college or university brand are finite in number, and we're still developing the full table of brand elements. The brand chemistry approach begins by analyzing an institution's brand to determine what elements are present and in what quantities. The way the elements are fused, the core focus, and a constellation of associated elements are what ultimately creates a distinctive brand formula for any college or university. The brand chemistry model, which is proprietary to Eduvation, is an intuitive and efficient way to convey an institution's brand identity to internal stakeholders. In this podcast, we'll be returning to the brand chemistry lab whenever we want to analyze marketing campaigns or brand strategies for colleges and universities. When we have time, we'll look at how the brand chemistry model can be used to synthesize the optimal brand formula for an institution. Once again, we are out of time. Thanks for taking 10 with me. Please take a moment to subscribe to the Eduvation channel on YouTube or to the 10 with Ken podcast on iTunes. For exclusive early access to upcoming episodes, please subscribe to my free email newsletter, The Eduvation Loop. I hope to see you next time.